Welcome to another edition of Inside Town Hall. I'm Jim Cameron, the host of this program and program director of Darien TV 79. And as its name implies, Inside Town Hall is where we talk to folks who work where else? Inside of Town Hall, <laughs> helping uh, better the government uh, of the people by the people in the beautiful town of Darien. Our two guests today are advocates, creators of maintainers of the democratic process uh we're joined by t- the the two registrars of voters in Darien, susan gray who represents the democrats and Kara gately who represents the republicans ladies welcome thanks, well you're Jimmy. already inside town hall but welcome to our show <laughs> thanks thank you now let's before we get into the mechanics of your job let's just talk a little bit about your background yours is uh each an elected position um susan you've been there the longest talk a little bit about how you came to uh run for uh, registrar of voters uh just talk to me i'm sorry i had to get rid of something on my screen okay um, so i um i'm a former lawyer and i uh, wanted to do something after my husband passed away and i was at a meeting um for the Democratic Town Committee members. And David Bain, the former chair, uh, told me that one of the registrars, Kathy Hamill, who had been here for a long time, was retiring. And I wanted to do something for the town. And so I thought this would, would be a good, a good way to get involved. I had always been involved through town, through PTO boards and CDSP and the depot board. And I wanted to do something more once my kids were in school, out of out of high school. And this was a great segue for me, and it's been a wonderful, wonderful opportunity. Great. Kara, how long, uh, uh, how did you get involved with uh, becoming registrar? Similar, um, John Vesey, who was the longstanding Republican registrar of voters, was looking to retire. And I had met him um, while I was helping my best friend campaign for the Board of Ed. And, you know, I found him just a really engaging, uh, interesting guy. Um, As a lawyer also, I was was sort of very uh, interested in the many um, litigations that came from various elections. And so had, you know, become at a personal interest, interested in the electoral process and the different ways that we elect our gov- our elector, our legislators and our um, executive branch officials. And so um, it was something that was very interesting to me. And we were talking and he had shown me a presentation that he used to do at the schools about how there had been a history of, you know, obstacles to voting. And um, he had this wonderful presentation. And we just sort of sparked a little friendship over this sort of interest in both history and the electoral process. And then when he was looking to retire, I spoke um, with, you know, the Republican town committee and I expressed my interest in it. And um, I interviewed for the position and was ultimately um, their nominee. And then I ran and, you know, Susan and I both ran uncontested. So we both got the job and we were elected. Great. Well, let's talk a little bit about the whole voter registration process. And I'm going to ask the kind of questions you probably get on a, on a regular enough basis. Um, and you can either just you know, put your hand up or answer the question. You know, whoever wants to take that. I, I won't favor one over the other of you. Um, who can register to vote? How old do you have to be? What are the requirements to register to vote in Darien? So um, an 18-year-old resident, U.S. citizen, resident of Darien can register to vote. Um, A 17-year-old, they can register to vote if they will be 18 on or before election day. A 17-year-old can also register to vote in the year of a primary if they will be turning 18 on or before election day, and they can vote in that primary as a 17 year old. That That's the law in Connecticut. Every state differs. And Kara, uh, how and where does one go to register to vote? That is a great question. And one we get asked on a daily basis, you can register to vote in many ways. You can fill out a card and mail it in. You can come to Town Hall Room 106 and register in person. You can register online 
Um, the state of Connecticut Secretary of State has a great website. It's super easy. You will need, though, a valid Connecticut driver's license to do that. Or you can register to vote also um, when you get or renew your Connecticut driver's license. So there's a lot of ways to register to vote. Um, we love when people come in, but you know you can do it online. You can mail something in. Uh, so there's lots of ways. And um, our office is open from nine till one-ish most days, uh, Monday through Thursday, however, because town hall is not open on Fridays. How do I know uh, if I, I mean, if I register once, do I have to register again? How do I know that I'm all ready to walk into the polling place on election day and uh, be given a ballot? You, you don't have to register again, but you do have to keep your registration active. So if you don't vote in, in I think the cycle is two elections. Um, you can be put on the inactive list and you will have to appear at the poll site with your proper ID um, to prove residence and identity and you'll fill out a new voter registration application and it'll just revive your registration status and you'll be able to vote in the election. So Kara, um, if, if all I need to do is to fill out a little card and uh, show my driver's license, how does that meet the criteria of knowing that I am um, a citizen? That is a great question. Um, and we, you don't have to necessarily show your driver's license. We don't require someone to have a driver's license in order to vote. You can show multiple forms of identification. But like Susan alluded to, you have to be able to show or affirm, you know, certify and affirm under penalty of perjury that you are in fact a U.S. citizen that can be, you know, by birth or becoming naturalized um, and that you are a bona fide resident of the town of Darien. If you're going to register here in Darien, obviously, if you live in another town, you have to be a bona fide resident of that town um, and that you have met the age requirement and that you're not um, incarcerated. Um, but if you meet those requirements and you have some form of identification to establish those things, or someone can, on your behalf, say, yes, in fact, this person does reside here, and I know that, and you affirm that on the registration form, then um, Susan and I can, you know, approve you for registration and, uh, as an elector. Let's say uh, I just moved to Darien, as a lot of people have in the past few years, and I want to register to vote in Darien. Uh, do I have to unregister to vote where I used to live? I can answer that. Um, you do not have to unregister to vote where you live. What will happen is we'd like you to. That would be very nice if you could let your town know that you are no longer register, registering to vote there. Um, but once you register to vote in Darien and we put you into the central, the CDRS central voting database, um, you're, you will be pulled from the other town automatically. And the other town will be notified that you have registered to vote here. So, Kara, all... that would, um, Kara, would that be true even if I moved from another state? Let's say I moved up from New York City. Unfortunately, our this Connecticut, like Susan alluded to, the CVRS system is the Connecticut voter registry system. Um, however, there is a a coalition of states that have signed um, on to a sort of like a coalition essentially where there's data sharing and um, there is a group that stands in the middle um, and they compile various data sources. And every year during the canvas, um, our office goes through these data sources, you know, forwarding addresses, forms, um, you know, mail changes. Um, and they also compile, they look at states, other states registries and they compare has this person with the same birthday the same name the same you know with a different address registered to vote somewhere else and we check and we don't automatically take those people off but we do in fact check and try to validate if they're here or they are bona fide resident somewhere else so you only get to vote once right that's once basically once. the rule yes another, another person, one vote. sorry another um another way that the voter can be taken off the voting list is if they renew their driver's license um, then and they show a change of address, 
uh, the DMV will notify us that that person has changed their address. And the Secretary of State will also notify other states that their voters have registered to vote here. So there is there is a system. We hope that we, we, we have faith in it and we, we think that it works. We're talking with Darianne's two uh, registrars of voters, Susan Gray and Kara Gately. And we're talking about the whole voter registration process. Um, Kara, when somebody comes down to register to vote, they get to choose a political party affiliation. They can. Um, now, you represent the Republicans. Yep. Do you get to nudge them in the direction of saying... <laughs> Just check the R box there. No, we are a completely nonpartisan office. We joke around at times about political affiliation um, amongst ourselves as an office, um, just, you know, playfully. Um, but no, we are, I think, a very professional, ethical, nonpartisan office. There's no, um, you know, the only thing we do, and Corey, um, Susan's deputy, is really great at informing people that, in fact, independent party is a party in the state of Connecticut. And there's a very, you know, interesting process that I didn't know about before I became the Rush Hour Voters um, to become, to form a political party in Connecticut. Um, so I think we have more third parties or fourth parties or fifth parties than other states do um, that in fact run candidates and endorse candidates and cross endorse candidates. Um, but no, we don't um, nudge anybody, but Corey does do a really, really great job. And so does Tracy and Susan and I, when people come in and they do register for the first time and they're like, oh, independent, we're like, you know, that's a party. Um, and it's a great party. I actually met Lisa Britton last night, who is, you know, an independent party candidate uh, in the past years in Norwalk. And she's a really great active um, citizen. And so it is, in fact, a political party here in Connecticut, but you don't have to register for a party. Um, you can just be unaffiliated. And, um, you know, that is the biggest block of voters that is growing in the state and is growing, you know, is the largest block of voters in the in Darien as well. And Susan, there are other, I mean, aside from the Democrats and the Republicans and the independent party, <laughs> there are other parties as well, too, that one could register for. Do you know, know offhand what those are? Oh, that's a good question. Um, there's a Green Party. There's a Libertarian Party. Uh, there really are not that many. There's a handful of parties in Connecticut that are not, that are minor parties. Um, I well, do not know of any other ones. What's for the families, advantage of registering families, with one with one party or another? Why would I want to register as a Republican or a Democrat? Because uh, that doesn't tie me to how I'm going to vote, right? But you can shape your candidates by you can help to shape who your who, which candidates are chosen if you if you affiliate with party that is the only way that you can vote in that party's primary so even though uh, well, full disclosure i've actually worked as a as a moderator in in polling elections so uh I, I won't tell i won't name names but i've i've had people come in on election primary election day and say i want to vote in the x party and they're not on the list as a registered member of the X party, but they'll say, I have always voted X all of my life. And Kara, what's wrong with that? I mean, they think that they are a member of the X party, we have, yep, you, but they can't vote are, in that primary, right? Yeah. No. Um, unless you are registered with the party, like, you know, you know, we know what party you're registered with. We do not know. And the secrecy, you know, the sanctity of the ballot and the secrecy of it is, you know, a big tenant of the American electoral system. We do not know how you vote. Um, so even if you've voted Republican or voted Democrat your whole life, unless you're registered and a member of that party, you cannot vote in their primary. There are two separate elections. Um, there's different ballots. There is two different, you know, cues that they go through um, on primary day. Um, and, you know, in many cities in Connecticut, the primary is the election for, you know, for all intents and purposes, given, you know, the makeup of certain the demographic, you know, the political party makeup in certain cities. So, you know, I think having a say in who your candidates are, you know, is a really important reason to um, register, you know, and affiliate with a party. Um, 
you know, I, we had a really interesting high school student come by this um, last spring, and he was a big proponent of open primaries. And, um, you know, there are some compelling arguments um, for open primaries. But right now in the state of Connecticut, given the party rules, and in most states, not all states, um, you have to register and affiliate with a party in order to participate in that party's primary, which determines the candidates. Okay, let's say I'm all registered to vote, maybe registered with a party, maybe just unaffiliated. And uh, it's coming up to November, and I've been following the debates, and I'm ready with my candidates, etc. How do I know where I'm supposed to vote? Are you going to send me a little postcard every year like you used to, or your predecessors used to? Uh, we do not send postcards every year to let you know where you vote. Um, but we, what we do is we post on our website uh, your districts, and there's an easy voter lookup tool that you can go through through the Secretary of State, which will tell you um, where you vote. Uh, if, for example, if we have a, a redistricting, as we did with the census, the 2020 census, we did send out cards to everyone who was redistricted and notified them of their new district and their new polling location. But as a matter of course, um, we don't do that unless we have a redistricting or we have a change in poll location. And uh, Kara, what are the hours? Oh, Kara just stepped away. I think she had to deal with something. She'll be back, I'm sure. Um, Kara, what are what are the hours uh, that the polls are open uh, traditionally? The polls are open from six a.m. Um, till eight p.m. Eight p.m. Eight p.m. Um, I always think nine, but it's eight p.m. But if you show up at eight p.m., even if there's a line, um, people who show up at that time will be allowed to vote, even if it's past eight a.m. If there's a queue, um, and um, yeah, and you can vote absentee this election. Um, so that gives people a little more flexibility if, you know, you know they have to work that day. Or they I, want, I want to talk about absentee ballots in just one second. But, oh, sure. you know, we were just just in case people are still confused. Where do I vote? Where do I vote? <laughs> I mean, you could walk into any polling place and say, do I vote here? Here's my address. And they'll be able to tell you, yes, you vote here or no, you go to town hall or someplace else. And I guess uh, leading up to uh, the elections in November, you get a few phone calls every day from people going, where do I vote? Where do I vote? You can look them up on their directory as well, too, right? Yep. We can look up by street. We can look up um, by their address and we can um, figure out what uh, district in town they, are, they reside and then what the polling place for that specific district. Okay, well, Carrie. Uh, Susan, go ahead. Sorry. Sorry. We, we, um, we did have some voters... We do have them from time to time who who have been redistricted or moved into town and they're not quite sure where they're supposed to be. So we've made up cards that um, that our demonstrator, which is one of our poll worker positions, will hand out to them and they'll look up their voting address and they'll check off their new voting district or their current voting district so that they have confidence when they get back in their car to go somewhere else in town, especially if they're new. So we have a, a, a card, a, a voter, a, a poll location card that will send them on their way with confidence. We're talking with Darian's two registrars of voters, Susan Gray and uh, Kara Gately. Kara, you use the magic words that people are interested in, absentee ballot. Now, it used to be uh, that you really had to be absent from town to legally get an absentee ballot. And you had to swear, I'm not going to be in town on election day. Uh, but that's changed, hasn't it? It has. Um, they've their legislator legislature in Connecticut has, um, you know, amended the statute that per, that allows for greater flexibility in um, what absent means. And so, absent can mean. You know, I'm not in the state or I'm unavailable. I'm sick. I'm caring for somebody who's sick. I am afraid of getting sick. Um, it's a much broader definition now, which I think allows people um, the flexibility um, given you know, lifestyles, given, you know, caring for children, caring for parents, caring for fa other family members, work, you know, demands. Um, so I think 
that was a um, you know real benefit to the um, residents of Connecticut to allow them to participate in the electoral process, this greater flexibility. And because there was the concern given, like you said, that there was you know a swearing and a certifying that yes, I in fact, I swear that I'm not gonna be here. Um, also with people's travel or college students, it allows for greater flexibility given the, broad, the more broad definition of what absent means. And Kara I, or uh, Susan, I think you mentioned uh, college students. If 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 my son or daughter is off uh, at school and knows he or she is not going to be back in town to vote in November, uh, as a parent, can I go get an absentee ballot for them? Do they have to apply for it? What's the process? Now we're getting a little bit into the town clerk's area of yeah. responsibility, but Absolutely. but this is possible. A college student can get an absentee ballot, right? Um, yeah, a college student has flexibility. Um, they can register to vote in the town where they are going to college, or they can register to vote in Darien. So if they've registered to vote and they're at school, they can at, they can apply through the town clerk's office for an absentee ballot application, and they can actually, on their registration application, they can give the mailing address where they want their information from the registrars and the town clerk sent, they can make that mailing address different from their residence address so that the town clerk and the registrars will know that they want the this to be sent. But I just wanted you to know that the absentee ballot process, application and ballot are handled, they're under the purview of the town clerk's office. And the registrars don't get involved in any of that until election day. Yeah, well, I don't want to even get into that can of worms yet about what happens on absentee ballots on election day. <laughs> but the important thing is that now with the new state law, um, it's almost like allowing early voting, is it not? It allows people to get a ballot and cast that ballot well in advance of the election itself without having the formal designation of early voting days. Kara, do you want to chime in on that? I think, you know, and that was a lot of the discussion amongst the town clerks and the registrar voters in the state, you know, during the lead up to um, the legislature passing the early voting was, okay, will this in fact confuse voters, you know, because the time periods are going to be different and the absentee ballot period is a broader time period um, for various reasons um, than the early voting period. But the process is pretty, well, we think it's going to be pretty similar um, and the procedures are going to be pretty similar. Um, so yes, um, you know, absentee balloting for many people is a you know, valuable convenience and it gives them much needed flexibility to, you know, educate themselves, cast their vote so that they're, you know, ensure that they don't miss casting their vote if, in fact, life gets in the way or, you know, an illness on election day. But um, like Susan, you know, stated, I, they're not the registrars of voters and do not get involved with the absentee ballots until election day. They're not run through a tabulator. They're held in a secure, you know, um, vault until election day, um, which will be a similar process, we believe, with early voting. But will we be having that drop-off box in front of town hall if people want to drop off absentee ballots? Yes, we will. Yes, and I wanted to say one more thing about absentee ballots. Um, no excuse absentee ballot is being proposed to the legislature and um, may be voted on in imminent upcoming elections. So um, we may have no excuse absentee balloting in the state of Connecticut, as many other states have, and we may we will be having early voting in the state of Connecticut. So there will be ample means for voters to cast their vote other than coming into the poll site and voting in person. Is, is early voting starting in this November election of 2023? No. <laughs> it will not be in place uh, for this election. It will be in place, though, for um, the presidential primary, which we don't know when that'll be. We think it'll be um, it, 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 there's, there's going to be a, a special session um, held to um, potentially move it up earlier in the calendar year. Um, but early voting will be in place, uh, we believe, for 
presidential preference primary and the primaries um, for next year. Oh, the big one next year. Yeah, that's when it gets kind of intense in your office, I'm sure, as well, too. Um, have we missed anything that people need to know about the voter registration process? Where to do it? When to do it? Why to do it? Party affiliation? Well, I just want to say, like, I think, you know, we have a really active electorate here in Darien, which, you know, I think our whole office is really you know, grateful for and really, you know, it's a source of pride for our office. And we sort of talk with other registrars about our voter registration percentages and um, our voter register, our voter turnout. So I really think that's kudos to our great leaders, our really engaged um, electorate, our engaged, you know, neighbors. And, you know, Jim, I think you have a, a really big role in it too, because I think keeping you know, especially with the decline in newspaper circulation, having information out there for people, you know, everything is local and, you know, getting people out there to vote and getting people informed is so important. And the small role we play in like getting them registered to vote and holding elections, right, we're really proud of it. But, you know, it's a whole big, you know, joint operation in, you know, that runs our town and involve people is really what makes it happen. Well, it's very kind of you to say that. That muffin basket I will be sending you a little to later today. <laughs> it's true. Is I, appreciation. I Susan, sorry. go ahead. I just wanted to give a shout out, and I know Kara feels the same way, to our poll workers, because yes. without our election officials, we would not have an election. And um, we are so fortunate in this town to have the volunteerism that we have. Uh, we have people who have been working as our moderators, who are the lead of the polls, of the poll site. Um, they've been working for years and years. We have moderators who have to get certified. They have to go through five hours of training and pass a certification exam. Then they have to go through two hours of training, at least with us. Uh, we have assistant registrars who are Kara and myself, on the ground. There are boots on the ground at the elections. Um, they have to be residents of Darien. We have wonderful checkers who have to know the law, the, the ID, uh, you know, laws in the state as they're performing their roles on election day. And ballot clerks and tab tenders and demonstrators and all the people who make this election work. It, it's, a, it's a big undertaking and it comes together beautifully because of the people who volunteer for us. You and just stole my thunder. I was going to ask oh. that very question because <laughs> people walk into the polling place on election day, Kara, and they kind of go, oh, there's my neighbor or there's <laughs> Sally. I, you know, how are the, how come they're working in the election? How, how, how do you get involved with the election process? And Susan called them volunteers, but I think we should disclose they do get paid. Do Not get a lot. Paid. They get paid. And they, they get, get free lunch or and, free dinner catered yes. from. Depends on how long they work. work. If they yeah. work the whole time, yeah, if they work one shift or, you know, one meal, two shifts or the full day, it, you know, we'll definitely feed people. Um, Michael Joseph's great food. Um, and um, we pay them. Um, so, it's, you know, it's a long day. So I kind of agree with Susan. It feels like, I mean, I'm sure it does not. It's an early day. It's a long day. Um, it's they, you know, really take it very seriously. So I don't think, you know, um, I don't know I, if we pay them enough. Um, uh, well, I assume they're not doing that. it for the money, right? I yeah, mean, I don't think they're doing it for the money. I really you couldn't think... pay me enough money in the world to be there at five thirty in the no, morning <laughs> and work straight through that. until eight thirty or nine o'clock at night. And and you know, our workers, like Susan said, they take their civic duty so important, so seriously. And a lot of them don't want to take the money. They're like, I'm not doing this for the money. We're like, but we have to pay you. Um, and but so thank you. But um, it's it's really their sense of civic duty and their sense of giving back to the town. And like Susan said, they work so hard. They know their stuff. They're so professional. And it's not always easy. And, you know, they want to get it right. And um, there is so sort of the nervous jitters right beforehand. There's a little bit of tension because they want to and because and they want to get it right and they don't want to create obstacles and they want to make sure they have the right answer and, and things run smoothly, which I think to the for the most part, our elections run really smooth. And um, it's a testament to 
like Susan said, our poll workers, um, town hall staff, our Department of Public Works who assists us, and, um, you know, all the great people who show up. It, ta- it takes a village. And I wanted to, I wanted to, I have, I have three fun facts for you, um, but I wanted to say that um, we have one of our poll sites who has worked, the, the poll workers have all worked together for some of them for many years. And after every election, they, they call it re-upping and they call us um, to make sure that every single person that worked with them in the last election is on board again. So we have, so we have a little group of election workers who love to work together and it's, it's very gratifying to have that happen. Um, We, we, we also um, do feed our poll workers very well. Um, I wanted you to know that I believe it's Greenwich who, who, and they'll, they'll call me if I'm wrong, um, who, who does not supply food. Um, I think their poll workers bring their own food, but we do lunch and dinner for Michael Joseph's, Joseph's, as Kara said, and we also do a Costco run before the election, and we buy snacks and drinks and all, all sorts of sustenance for the poll workers. We just, we want the poll workers to be comfortable. We want them to be happy. It's a long, grueling day. And having worked as a poll worker, there is one moderator who I will not name, but he actually caters. He He comes around with a tray of cheese and crackers for the poll workers. He does. Along with the donuts and the sugar (laughs) and keeping you all motivated, etc. But um, I I assume you're you're always looking for more poll workers. Mm -hmm. And they can just contact the registrar's office if they're interested in uh, signing up. Yes, they, they can. They can also um, let us know when they register to vote. There's a there's a checkoff box for uh-huh. would you like to work in the polls? I wanted you to know that um, we are we are working on ways to redesign our website um, in our office, and um, and we're going to be putting a poll worker sign up sheet on the website. Right now, um, we reach out to our poll workers before every election, at least a few times a year, um, to see what they are interested in doing, if they're going to be around. It depends on how many elections we're holding that year. Um, and we, the people come in in person, they call us, they email us, and we reach out to them. But we will have something up on our website, I think Kara could talk about that um, very, very soon. Yes, uh, actually, not just our office is redesigning the website. The entire town, the town of Darien, will be getting a new uh, website hosting, you know, uh, vendor, and so um, it'll be more interactive, and we'll be able to have, um, you know, poll worker interest forms that are sort of live links that can be, you know, sent to us directly, which will be great, and will really enhance the process and uh, of of ease for people to be like, oh yeah, I want to be a poll worker, click, and then they can just fill out the form, which will be great. There is a form on the Secretary of State's website that um, people can fill out. And if they indicate that they live in Darien and want to, are interested in being a poll worker in Darien, that will be routed to us. And you don't have to work that entire 14 hour day. If you're, if you want to, if you're a morning person, you just want to work the morning shift, or if you're an afternoon person, you work the afternoon shift. Uh, Having done it for many years, uh, yes, it's a lot you. of fun, especially if it's a busy election. It is. If it's a primary and 12 people stroll in all afternoon, uh, it gets a little quiet. But uh, uh, I agree with you, uh, having been there myself, everybody that does that job does it because they really believe in democracy yes. and they want to make the voting process as smooth as possible. And for those of you who have just moved to Darien from New York City, and this is going to be your first election Welcome to the way it should be done. You will yes. not be standing in line for three hours to vote. You'll Thank be in you. and out of there faster than uh, going to McDonald's. Um, yeah, and after, and after early satisfied. voting, after early voting, it will be you know there will be fewer people voting in person. So, Even um, less. Yeah. so those lines at the presidential election may be shortened. I just wanted to give you three fun facts, if that's if that's okay. Sure, let's leave it with the fun facts here. Go ahead, Susan. Um, we have. As of today, 14,750 registered voters out of a total population, well, it's 68.6% of our total population. We have 620 inactive voters. 
we have a very large under 18 population. So we think that we're doing very well in terms of our registration of eligible voters in Varian. And, and, and Carol, what's the turnout in a typical election? How many of those people actually vote? Well, I think it depends on the type of election. So, um, you know, we have really, really high, you know, one of the highest in the state turnout for, say, presidential elections, uh, really high turnout. Um, municipal election, which is this year, where there's no statewide office in Darien um, on the ballot, but our local offices are on the ballot, Board of Selectmen, First Selectmen, Board of Education, Board of Finance, Treasurer, Tax Collector, um, all the constables, all those offices are on the ballot this year and our great RTM members. So, um, yes, <laughs> no, I mean, and we actually, have, I think there might be... Um, a race in there. So um, it's point. still important, uh, though it'll be slightly, it, 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 it won't be as high as the presidential where we get, you know, 80% or so of our registered um, voters turn out. It will be probably in the 30% range. Uh, maybe, you know, we hope. Um, so, you know, we kind of get the word out. We want people to show up um, local. Everything is local. Local issues are really important. Um, if you care about, you know, Great Island or Reed Beach or what's happening at Pear Tree or what's happening in our parks or what's going on in the schools, you know, these local elections, those are the people who make those decisions. And so it's really important to show up for the local elections, too. Well, on that optimistic, participatory, <laughs> democratic uh, note, why don't we leave it there? Thanks, uh, our guest today on uh, Inside Town Hall, Kara Gately who is the Republican Registrar of Voters, and Susan Gray, who is the Democratic Registrar of Voters. I, I want to thank you first for your service to the town, thank you. Uh, and then thank you as well for your time and joining us today on the program. Thanks, Jim. Thank you for having us. And thank you for your service. The muffin RTM basket, as I say, 70. is on its way. Thank you. I appreciate <laughs> thank you. that. Bye, guys. And we got to thank, thank our viewers. They're the ones that yeah, make yes. this all possible. Yes, so faithful viewers. Thank you. Once again, you have watched another edition. Wherever they are, right, Jim? Inside of Town Hall, wherever you are.